Okay, so we're going to be moving on to the next exercise, which is exercise 5b, and this focuses on Venn diagrams. So Venn diagrams allow us to combine events. So for example, you might want to say that A happened and B happened at the same time. So we're going to go through these four Venn diagrams that we've got here, and we're going to do the relevant shading that is needed for them. So for this first one, we've got the event A and B. This is known as the intersection of A and B. And what you'll eventually be doing later on is you'll know that you can write this as A and B like this. What you do for this is you just shade the overlap. So when we shade the overlap of both A and B, it is only going to be this section that comes in the middle. That's the only place where it's true for both of them. The event A or B, that means um, it's the union of A and B. We actually use this letter U to do the union, even though we need that in pure two. Um, I thought we'd mention it now. Now the way that you do this, you do this is you shade A and shade you just shade both of the things entirely. So I'll just show you what that will look like. When I shade all of A, I will obviously have all of this loop that I've got here. And because it's OR, it means I can also have B as well. So I'm also going to shade that B loop as well. So you end up with that kind of figure of eight shape for A or B, and that's the union of them. So you shade all of the first bit and all of the second bit as well. Now the event NOT A is known as the complement of A. Actually, the language we use for this is we just do a little dash. So everything that is going to be NOT A means everything that's going to be on the outside of this A loop that we've got here. So it's going to be everything but A. So quite a lot of the Venn diagram gets shaded there. I haven't been very neat, but you get the idea. And you can combine these together and you do a lot more of combining them together in year two. So this one says A and not B. So it would be A and not B. But we can just think of this kind of sensibly here. It's the A overlap of where it is A, but it is also not B. So all of A is this, but we need it to not be B. So I'm going to get rid of that section. And what we get left with is this kind of like moon shape part that we've got here for A, where it's just that little crescent moon shape that we've got for A and not B. And you're going to need to know how to do more of this in year two, as I said, um, but they stay pretty basic for year one that we've got here. And there's a few different things you can put into a Venn diagram. So far, we actually did an example up here where we put the outcomes into the Venn diagram. But there's a couple of other things that you can put in as well. So we can put in frequencies of how many things there might be in a particular set, or we can put in probabilities. And this first example that we're going to be doing, we are putting probabilities into this Venn diagram. So it says here that given that the probability of A is 0 0.6 and the probability of A or B is 0 0.85, find the probability of these two things that we've got here. Now, it didn't ask us to draw a Venn diagram, but it is always going to be useful to draw a Venn diagram. That is one of my top tips. Try and draw a Venn diagram. It's going to make the question so much easier. So first of all, we know that the probability of A, all of this section here, is 0.6. And we know that all of A or B is 0.85. So I'm going to shade that whole thing in like this. And maybe I'll do a bit of a, a separate part. So we know that this A section is 0.6. And we know that the whole section of both of them together is 0.85. So I'm hoping that you can then tell me that this section here must be 0.25. Now, we can't actually quite work out what this middle intersection bit is, but I'm hoping we're not going to need it for this question. But there is probably some other things that I can fill in here now that I know this is 0.6 and this is 0.25. I should be able to find out what the probability is that goes on the outside here. Well, I know that all of the probabilities for this sample space are going to have to add up, have to add up to one. So I'm going to do one take away 0.6, take away 0.25, which is 0.15, meaning this probability on the outside here is 0.15. So now we can get on and actually answer these questions. What's the probability that it is not A and it is B? Well, that looks like it's going to be this section for B, but it's not allowed to be in A. So it's just going to be this yellow bit that we have over here. So the probability of not A and B is going to be 0.25. And if you wanted to think about year two here, we would say not A and B for that bit. And then the second part says it is neither A nor B. This means that it is not A and it is not B. It can't be in either of A or B. And the only part that that's going to be is the outside section. So it's going to be this probability that we've got over here, which is 0.15.
like I've said a couple of times, if you don't feel like using this notation yet, you don't have to, but you will be using it in pure year two. OK, this time we're going to do an example where instead of there being probabilities inside the frequent inside the Venn diagram, there are going to be frequencies instead. So it says in a class of 30 students, seven are in the choir, five are in the school band and two are in the choir and the school band. A, choosing, a student is chosen at random from the class. And even if it didn't ask us to draw a Venn diagram, a Venn diagram is going to be the best way to start for this. So I'm going to start off with my outside box and I'm going to have my two loops of the things that are going to go inside. Now, I've got some information here. I've got that two are in the choir and the school band, five are in the school band, seven are in the choir and 30 students in total. I guess I better label these things. So I'm going to say that this C is going to represent that the student is in the choir. And I'm going to do B to say that they are in the school band. Now, out of these three numbers that we've got here, the two, the five and the seven, the best one to start with is that there are two in the choir and the school band, because we know for sure that that is going to go in the intersection there. It then says that there are five in the school band if we're working backwards. Well, this is the school band here. The mistake that sometimes students make is they put a five, but that wouldn't mean that there were five students in the school band. That would actually mean that there were seven. So we don't put five there. We actually just put in three to make the total be five. And now I've dealt with that bit, so I'm going to underline it and say that it's done. We've then got that there are seven in the choir, so there's a two already there, which means I'm going to need to fill this in with a five so that I get this part. And then last of all, I need to make sure I deal with the 30 students. So in total, there are 30. So I'm going to do 30, take away five, take away two, take away three to see that we get 20 who are going to be in this section on the outside of our sample space that we've got. So now we've done that, it should be pretty easy to answer the rest of the questions. The probability that the student is not in the band, well, not in the band is going to be everything outside of this yellow loop. So it looks like it's going to be a 20 and a 5 out of 30. So 25 out of 30, which is the same as 5 over 6. And then part C says find that the, uh, the probability the student is not in the choir nor in the band. Well, that's just going to be anyone that's outside of those two groups, which is 20. So it's 20 out of 30, which I'm just going to simplify to two thirds. Now, you can get some other questions that are with three sets. Um, and so we're going to look at this question here. It says that a vet surveys 100 of her clients. She finds that 25 own dogs, 15 own dogs and cats etc, etc, etc. We've got all of this information. And we're going to try and fill this information into a Venn diagram and then answer these questions afterwards. Now, when you look through all of this information, the tip that I've written over here is to start from the center frequency and work your way outwards using subtraction. So this little area that I've got in the middle here is going to be owning the cats, dogs and fish. And I think that part of the number is going to be this bit, seven own cats, dogs and tropical fish. So I'm going to put the seven inside there. Now, I think the next bit that's going to be easier to deal with are these kind of overlapping parts that we've got. So I'm going to start off with, I don't know, let's see this one here, 15 own dogs and cats. So I'm going to highlight that to show that I've dealt with it. 15 owning dogs and cats. Well, there's already a seven inside this bit. So this is going to need to be an eight that we have over here. So I've now dealt with that section. I'm now going to find maybe the dogs and fish. So let's have a look at dogs and fish. We've got 11 owning dogs and tropical fish. So that means that's going to have to be a four to make the total down there 11. And then I'm going to have a look at this section, which is going to be cats and tropical fish. So there are 10 who own cats and tropical fish. That means that's going to have to be a three that we've got there. Now we've just got these last three pieces, oh sorry, four pieces of information to deal with. So we know that 40 of them own tropical fish. So I'm going to do 40 and I'm going to take away four, seven and three to find out how many people should be in that group by itself. So I'll do 40, take away seven, take away three. Well, 40 take away seven and three is 30. Take away four is 36. So that's going to be, that is completely and utterly wrong. Sorry, it's going to be 26. Yes, that's right. And let me just quickly erase that. And then we're going to do the same. So I can cross off. I've done with that one now. We're going to do the bit which is 53 of them owning cats. And I'm going to take away the 8, the 7 and the 3. Well, 53 taking away 3 is 50 and take away 15 is 35. So we've got 35 that go inside here.
Okay, last part that we're going to deal with, the 25 owning dogs. Well, there are 25 who own dogs. We're going to take away the 8, the 7, and the 4. I'm going to take away the 8 and the 7. That will bring it all the way down to 10. Take away the 4, and I have 6. So this is a 6. Now, I said that was the last thing, but there's not. There is indeed one more thing for us to deal with, which is this 100 of her clients. So I'm going to do a bit of a trick here. Rather than subtracting all of these values, I'm going to know the fact that um, I can say that 53 of them own cats so in i actually know that this whole section here is already 53 so i'm actually just going to take away 53 6 4 and 26 just to kind of speed up a bit of time there i'm going to do 100 take away 53 take away 6 take away 4 take away 26 and i get 11 so there is 11 here now i'm just going to answer these questions the probability that someone owns only dogs uh, well, that's pretty easy, actually, because I think they told us, oh, that's, we can just see it straight here in the Venn diagram. They only have dogs is 6 out of 100, which is 6% or 0.06. The probability they do not own tropical fish. Well, that's actually pretty easy because we can see here from the question, 40 of them own tropical fish. So there must be 60 of them who don't own tropical fish, which is going to be 0.6. And the probability that they do not own dogs, cats or tropical fish, I forgot to put the 11 on the diagram, there are 11 people who don't own either, any of them, sorry, which will be 0.11. So start at that centre frequency and build outwards. I quite like using this trick down here of saying you can just take 53 rather than doing 35, 8, 7 and 3. We already know from earlier on that they all add up to 53. So I would like you to have a go at this question that we've got here. Um, it is an exam question from quite a long time ago now. Um, read through all this information and you can draw the Venn diagram, but make sure that you do draw an outside box. If you don't draw the outside box, you do lose a mark. And then you're going to be able to do exercise 5B. So pause the video and have a go. And I'm going to go through this question in just a second. OK, I'm going to draw my Venn diagram over here. We'll do some nice big circles with lots of overlaps. OK, so I better label them. We've got running, cycling and swimming. And I think the best piece of information to use at this one, first of all, says 25, do all three. 35, run and cycle. So that's going to have to be a 10 to make it 35 for their overlap. 30, swim and cycle. So I'm going to put a five over here. 40, run and swim. So that's talking about this section here. So that's going to have to be a 15 to make the 25 and the 15 add up to 40. And now I'm going to deal with these last bits here. So 65 of them run. So I'm going to do 65 and I'm going to take away these three numbers that we've got here. So I'm going to take away 10, 25 and 15. Well, let's see what these are. So that's 10, 35, 45, 50. So it's going to be 15 here. Let's just check that makes sense. So we get 30, 40, 50, 65 running. So that's good. I can get rid of that. Now 60 of them cycle. So I'm going to take away the 10, the 25 and the 5. Well, when I do this in my head, 25 and 5 is 30. That's 40. So 60 take away 40 is 20. And then for the last part, which is for the swimmers, I'm going to do 48, take away 25, 15 and 5. Well, 25 and 15, that is 30, that's 45, 20, 30, 45, so 48 take away 45 is 3, so it's going to be a 3 in here. Now I just need to deal with this last part, that there's 100 people, so again I'm going to do that trick of taking away like a big chunk of them all together, I'm going to take away all of these, as well as these other numbers that I've got, so I'm going to do 100, take away the runners, which was 65, and I'll take away 25, and three and see what I've got left over. So I'm going to do 100, take away 65, take away 20, take away five, take away three, and I get the answer seven, which I need to put on that outside section that I have there. So last parts should be pretty easy. The probability they take none of these types of exercise, well, there's seven of them on the outside, so it's seven out of 100 or 0.07 swims but does not run so i'm going to highlight this here are the swimmers but they're not allowed to run so it's just going to be these two sections which is going to be eight out of the 100 people or 0.08 
And last of all, takes at least two types of these exercise. So I'll highlight these in green. These people take two types of exercise. These people take two types of exercise. These people take two types of exercise. And these people take at least two. They actually take all three. So when you add all of those together, 10 and 25, that's 35, that's 40, that's 55. So it looks like we're going to have 55 out of 100 which is equal to 0 0.05. Now, if the question was different, if it said they take exactly two types, we wouldn't include the 25. We would just say the two types would be the 10, the 15, and the five. So what would that be? 10, 20, that would be 30 out of 100, or 30% if it was exactly two types. I hope you got those ones right. I hope I've not made any mistakes with adding up my numbers. If I have, um, it's because I'm in lockdown and it's all getting a bit tough. Um, so good luck with exercise 5B.